of first year hires fail. That's sort of just generally. Um, and there's also gender and ethnic bias in the process. And that's been pretty well documented. So what is the solution that we're proposing here? So my background, my co-founder's background, who's not here today, we're both, uh, we're both neuroscientists and my co-founder is a data scientist. We met at MIT when we were using these technologies that I'm going to propose uh, that we're now using for career matching in brain imaging research. Okay? And so what we, just, what we learned in our you know, 10 years at Harvard and MIT doing brain imaging is that if you collect better, more objective, more high density data on people, you can actually do a better job of predicting research outcomes. That was what we were doing back in the lab. And now what we're doing is employing that same high density objective data to look at career outcomes. That's essentially the, and building a matching system for that. Um, and again, last but not least, just want to emphasize that all these algorithms are also ensured to be bias free so that we're not perpetuating any kind of unconscious or conscious bias in, the, in that. So what do I mean by better data? And we'll get into this in a minute. But essentially what I mean is that we're using, we call them games. Um, back in our scientist days, we would have never called them games. We would have made a very horrible sounding, onerous name, but we used to call them scientific exercises, now we call them games. But essentially they're activities that you perform on the computer that track your behavior and then map it to some cognitive or emotional personality trait that has been deemed important in human beings, such as memory or attention or planning on the one hand for the cognitive traits or how well you uh, identify emotion on someone's face or how well or what are your risk uh, conditions or how effort seeking are you. Things of those nature that basically neuroscience have neuroscientists around the globe have determined to be important aspects of human of human personality makeup, personality and cognitive makeup. And so there have been games that have been developed by neuroscientists around the globe to assess these traits. And the reason they were developed was to link this behavior to brain imaging data that we were collecting in scanners. Uh, to do our imaging research. Now these games can also be used offline to do prediction. So we don't use scanners anymore. We don't put anyone in MRI machines to do this. Uh, the scanner has been removed from the equation. It's just the games. And we assess 90 different cognitive, emotional, and personality traits. And again, these are all nonverbal uh, games. So they're not culturally anchored the way you know questionnaires or other things might be. So that's the data part. And then the matching algorithms, essentially what we're doing is we're to figure out what what traits are important for a particular career, you take successful examples of that career and you use data science to figure out what the important features are and you extract those. And then last but not least, part of what's kind of cool about the technology is that um, unlike some of the other data that people are using to predict fit in people, the games were generally, are generally not thought to have any inherent gender or ethnic bias, so they're not picking up on that if the training sample is biased. Um, and then we do some other things as well to sort of mitigate the impacts of any kind of bias. In the so the website is at uh, pymetrics.com. It's pymetrics.com. And uh, yeah. they advertise themselves as matching job seekers to their best fit jobs through neuroscience assessments plus unbiased data algorithms. Okay, and I would argue that both of these are low density and also subjective. People tend to think that, you know, resume or whatever is not necessarily a subjective piece of information. I would argue that... That's not entirely true, and there's lots of pieces on there that are pretty subjective. So this graph illustrates, this picture illustrates what the problem is, generally speaking, with subjective data, which is that if I ask any of you in your room your weight, you may know what your weight is, you may not. However, putting you on a scale is really the best way to figure that out, and that's essentially what we're trying to do with collecting behavior. And the other problem, again, with both questionnaire data and even, you could argue, resume data, is that it is looking really at high level features that have low resolution, right? So if you think of a face, um, and this is, you know, faces are used obviously to train facial recognition uh, software. If the algorithm, if the algorithms were being trained on very high level features, such as eye color, blonde hair, and such and such, you would probably never be able to develop any algorithms that would then predict, um, be able to do facial recognition. And that's sort of the, the analog here in matching people to careers is that we're looking at these very high level features um, such as you know what school you went to or you know what your leadership uh, style is or your passion or something that's just very very high level and low resolution so what the nice thing is that this is also you know, free for job uh, seekers um, you can just register uh, on their website here in 
into much more, much lower level features with higher resolution, right? So we looked at, you know, coordinates for facial features, distances, um, and so on. And that allowed us to build, you know, software that works better than, you know, it's not perfect, but it, it works, right? So that's what we're proposing here, is that instead of looking at these high level features in people, that you break it down into lower level uh, features that have a higher resolution. And so I'm gonna show you one of the games right now, but you'll see that we're not just looking at um, your, you know, whether you did it correctly or incorrectly, like it's not a binary outcome, it's really we're looking at the process of how you got there. So this is a very straightforward, um, so she goes on to uh, demonstrate uh, an example of uh, some of the games that they've got, but uh, the games are designed to reduce bias embedded in the structures of traditional assessments. Uh, for example, women and minorities fare worse than men on standardized tests, and our game design uh, corrects for this, according to their website. Uh, they're looking at blind auditions to mitigate conscious and unconscious biases. Candidates move through their platform completely anonymously, and the prediction algorithm does not use demographic information to assess career fit. Uh, they've got statistical tools to uh, uh, stools, <laughs> statistical tools. Excuse me, uh, to remove a residual bias. Uh, their platform goes a step beyond the usual, complementing game design and the blinding process by removing residual bias. And so, what you get at the end is a readout of sort of different features that we collect and sort of where you stand on the distribution. Um, and this information is a lot more useful in terms of uh, building algorithms. In, for, as features for building algorithms than just sort of binary binary outputs. So we go back to sorry the slide. Um, so that's the data side of what we're doing differently in terms of trying to optimize the matching system. And then you know so again recruiting is a challenging field for the reasons that I just mentioned because the data that you have is not very robust. Let's say right. But even if we take that aside, I think you should. So this is a very technical audience. Um, so this stuff is. They've got careers though uh, across the board for accounting, uh, for accounting, for bioengineering, business development, buyers, consulting, corporate finance, customer service representatives, uh, data science, education management, entrepreneurship, financial advising, uh, front end engineering, and the like. Uh, more on their website at pymetrics.com. Um, they're obviously prone to overfitting, which is what this graph over here is showing. They tend to be run as consulting uh, business models. And again, when you're looking at sort of more traditional models, people are really optimizing them for description of data overfitting rather than prediction, <laughs> right? And again, you guys all know this, that's fine. But just to realize that the bulk of the businesses out there, they're trying to do some sort of matching, however they're doing it, are kind of built on this premise. So really... This is the state of affairs, and we're trying to move it forward into a world where machine learning is actually entering, um, entering the picture. So again, this is very standard machine learning stuff. Uh, but what we're trying to do is really, you know, model the data in the most flex flexible manner, obviously using also cross validation and regularization. So to avoid overfitting and really to make it plug and play, right? So you can put some data in and automate the entire process. So at the end, it's a very highly scalable and replicable process. Um, the one thing that we, one challenge that we had to think about when we were doing this is that because people are interested in the features, you can't just sort of assume that you put some stuff in, something comes out, and nobody cares, right? So we actually had to take a, take a lot of care and provide descriptive, you know, things to actually explain what features were important and, and why they were important. So that's just something to think about, that it's a, a unique challenge in the machine learning field that you actually have to look at the features and make them human readable, essentially. Um, and they're just, sorry, just going back to that slide one minute. So there are a handful of startups that are starting to do this type of work in the recruiting field. Many of them are focusing on the resume uh, as a field, as a source of data. Again, we would argue that, you know, there's some problems to that, but, you know, we are one of the few that's really looking at other forms of data to, to, to move this problem forward. 
So your heads may be spinning now. Uh, that is a really, really uh, fascinating way of uh, taking a look at uh, the job industry, leveraging neuroscience, getting rid of biases uh, that uh, may be entered into the process, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, and I want to commend the folks over at Pymetrics for uh, introducing this service. If you are a job seeker or uh, know somebody who is, uh, certainly go check out this uh, as one outlet uh, for your job search. Uh, well, it looks like I'm joined in studio right now by a couple helpers, which means it's time to wrap up the show today here at Pop Song Tech, and I want to thank you again uh, for this past year that you've been supporting the show. If you've got ideas for the show, uh, send me an email, popsongtech at gmail.com. I want to thank Erica Lee for joining us today as well, and uh, we're going to end the show today uh, with one more song from Erica Lee. Uh, this song is called Jokes on Her. Have a great week. me they